This morning on today's family estate planning for parents. It's one of those things that most people hate to think about, but it's also one of the best things you can do for your children. Alexis Martin Neely is a lawyer and also the author of a book called Wear Clean Underwear, a fast, fun, friendly guide to legal planning for busy parents. Alexis, good morning. Hi, Anne. The title of the book aside, which sounds like a funny topic, <laughs> yeah. this actually is a very serious topic, and it's a very difficult terrain for anyone to navigate. What do you say to parents who have not started? to figure out their estate planning yeah. for their children. I say get started and that's really why I wrote the book because I wanted to make it something that was easier and lighter to talk about. That's why the title Wear Clean Underwear. You know our moms always told us wear clean underwear but now that you're a parent wearing clean underwear in case you're in an accident isn't enough. There's important legal planning steps you've got to take. You say that a will is not enough and yeah. that is um, surprising. A will is a really important legal document. It's a way to get started. You can name guardians for your kids. You can say how you want your money to pass. But your will is not going to be there in the immediate term if something happens to you. And your will is not going to keep everything private. And so a will isn't enough if you have minor children. So what else do you need? Well, first of all, there's, there's four steps. Every parent really needs a comprehensive kids protection plan. No matter how much money you have, you've got to name legal guardians for your kids for the long term. If you have $5, $50 million, it doesn't matter. You must do that. In fact, you say there is the legal guardian, uh, but there's also a short-term guardian right. yes. that you think we should name. Absolutely, because long-term is great, but what's going to happen in the immediate term? As I soon as you die, if you were to die, the or worst happens. if you happens. were to be in an accident. Mm. If you're just to be in an accident, in your will might not be there. Yes, and so you want to have short-term guardians named who are going to be there immediately, people your kids know and trust and are local, Friends or family? Do you do you? But that is is that necessarily something you would do legally, or is it something you would sort of do verbally with a neighbor? No, no, definitely not verbally. It needs to be legally in writing because if your neighbor doesn't have legal authority to stay with your kids, the police could have to call in child protective services and bring in strangers, and you don't want that as a. You also say leave instructions with yes. who? Well, you need to leave instructions with everyone, with your caregivers, with your guardians, letting them know what to do if something happens. And I carry an ID card in my wallet, a family emergency ID card that says, I have minor children at home. Here's who should be contacted if anything happens to me. I recommend all parents do the same. Mm -hmm. And then you were mentioning earlier finances, and that raises a real question. Yeah. What do we do in terms of how do we make sure the money that we have left goes to our children? Well, the first thing, Anne, is, as we said, a will is not enough. You really want to leave your assets through a trust. In some states, leaving, leaving your assets through a will is going to put your assets through an expensive and long court process. In every state, that court process is totally public. The only way to avoid that is to put your assets through a trust. And you don't want to think just about your money assets. You also want to think about your intellectual, spiritual, and human assets, or who you are and what's important to you. The trust is something we think that rich people have. All people, whether, if you have money that you're concerned about leaving behind your kids, you want to leave that through a trust. Because you a don't trust have would do, rich. you would not have to be public. A trust right. is private. Totally and private. basically says that your money is basically put into something separate from you, really, That's right? That's right. And the trust lasts after your, after your death or in the event of your incapacity. The trust is basically just a set of instructions saying who you want to take care of things and how you want them to take and care of things. And also you want to update all these documents often. It's a hard thing to think it is a way of loving our families, loving our children. That's right. I say it's a gift for the people that you love the most. All right. Alexis Martin Neely, thank you so much. Thanks, Anne.